Hi, I'm Lance Pierce, Assistant Director of State Legislative Affairs at Florida Farm Bureau. I'm here with Adam Basford, our Director of State Legislative Affairs. And for the past couple of legislative sessions, Farm Bureau has been working on legislation that exempts parts and repairs uh, from power farm equipment from the state sales tax. And after a lot of hard work by Farm Bureau members and our bill sponsors, uh, that legislation passed during the June special session in 2015 and went into effect July 1. Can you tell us a little bit about the bill and a little bit about the impacts that that bill will have on our farmers and ranchers? Absolutely. You know, this is a very good thing. It's a, it's a broad sales tax exemption that I think is going to impact every farmer and rancher. Um, it's something we've been working hard on and it's ultimately going to save about $13 million a year for farmers and ranchers. You know, several years ago, uh, the legislature passed an exemption for power farm equipment that's used exclusively on a farm. The statute says that power farm equipment is that piece of equipment that is powered or another piece of equipment that is drawn by that power farm equipment uh, to be used in agriculture. So things like tractors, hay balers, discs, plows, um, even pumps and electric motors, those things are included in power farm equipment and they've been exempt from sales tax for a while. Um, but the primary thing that this bill did was to exempt the parts and repair for the power, power farm equipment from the sales tax because that wasn't done before. Um, and that means that every time that a farmer walks into a tractor supply store or to the parts house, they're going to be able to, to reap the benefits from this legislation. So explain a little more about how that works. When farmers buy parts to repair their tractors, those are exempt. Uh, but what about costs of maintenance or how about if a dealer or repair shop does the repairs? Right. I mean, generally when you think of parts and repairs, you're thinking about just those pieces that are used to, to make the repairs. But really this exemption is, is pretty broad. And so um, things like batteries, hoses, um, belts, things that you would consider maintenance, even lubricants, hydraulic fluid, motor oil, those things are considered to be parts and repairs for power farm equipment and they're going to be exempt too. And like I said, again, it's broad and so even accessories to um, that power farm equipment, think a GPS unit on a, a tractor or even radios, um, even um, smart sprayer technology, that kind of stuff is going to be eligible under this exemption too. Didn't the bill also change something about irrigation equipment? Right. Uh, up until this point, irrigation equipment, the only way to get the sales tax exemption was if it was part of a greater package that had that power unit associated with it. So if you bought an entire unit that had a pump, that had a motor, altogether that was exempt. But if you bought the pipes separately or you bought the nozzles separately, those weren't exempt. Now this bill changed that and so no matter what part of that irrigation equipment you buy, it's going to be sales tax exempt. So think like nozzles, hoses, pipes, um, all of those things are exempt, even drip tape, those kind of things that are, are disposable but an integral part of an irrigation system, they're going to be exempt from sales tax now. So those are some pretty significant changes to how the tax code handles power farm equipment. Um, the bill also provides for a sales tax exemption on trailers. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Right. Trailers are widely used on farms. I mean, we have to have them to haul our equipment, to haul our products, and so it was uh, natural to try to get those exempted from, from sales tax as well. But we kind of had to put some limits around what trailers were eligible for the sales tax exemption because of the price tag of the, the tax package. And we did that in a couple of ways. Uh, one limit we had to put on there was, was based on the weight of the trailer. So if a trailer is 12,000 pounds or less, then it's going to be eligible for the sales tax exemption. Anything above 12,000 is not. But that 12,000 pound limit really catches a lot of trailers. Things like livestock trailers, even some heavy duty goosenecks, um, even some semi-trailer box trucks, box trailers are going to be uh, exempt from that and fit under that 12,000 pound uh, scenario. The other limit we had to put on it was um, a, a price limit. So the first $20,000 is going to be exempt from the, the sales tax. Anything above $20,000 you have to pay the sales tax. But really, uh, again, most trailers that we see that are used in agriculture are going to fit under that $20,000 scenario. So there's limits based on weight and price. Um, isn't there also a limit based on who is eligible for the exemption? Right. According to the bill, only farmers or the people involved directly in production 
of those uh, crops are going to be exempt from, from that. So um, haulers, um, custom haulers or, or loggers or people that are kind of in the, the, um, the supply sector of agriculture aren't going to be able to be eligible, only those people who are, are real producers. So there's been a little bit of confusion about um, whether or not things like tires and repair parts are sales tax exempt on trailers now. Right. Um, can you clear that up for us? <laughs> right. There have been some, some questions, and, and the best thing we need to do is to separate those two exemptions. So you have the exemption for trailers and the exemption for uh, power farm equipment and the parts and repairs for those things. And, um, and trailers, the sales tax is exempt, nothing else, but the power farm equipment um, all of that, is the, the sales price and the parts and repairs are going to be exempt. So the best way to kind of separate those, because some trailers and wagons are used in ag production and could be considered power farm equipment, the best way to make that distinction of, is whether or not it's tagged, whether or not you need to have a license plate for that vehicle. And if it is licensed, it does have a tag on it, then it's a trailer and therefore not going to be eligible for the sales tax exemption for parts and repairs. But if it's not, if it's something that's just used on the farm for production, then that's going to be power farm equipment and eligible for parts and repairs too. So is there anything that farmers need to do to be able to get the exemption? How does the uh, guy behind the counter at the home improvement store um, or the local store know that the PVC pipe that you're purchasing that's going towards your irrigation equipment is supposed to be sales tax exempt. Right. Well, um, you have to have a certificate in order to get these exemptions. And basically what that certificate says is that I, the farmer, certify that I'm really eligible for this sales tax exemption. I am going to use this PVC pipe for my irrigation system and it's, it's eligible. And basically it says I take um, the responsibility on me and the retailer doesn't have responsibility for the, any kind of fraud that may take place. And we hope to trust our members to do the right thing, but there are probably some bad actors that'll, that'll try to get a sales tax exemption. Um, but this certificate basically absolves the retail establishment um, from any liability due to that. And so you can get those certificates on our website. The Department of Revenue basically has a template um, that, that we've posted on our website that people can get available there. And what you do is you just simply fill out that certificate saying what parts and repair uh, or it's just the power farm equipment, what is eligible. You sign that and hand that to the, the retail establishment and it should work pretty well. Well, thanks, Adam. Um, I think that clears up a lot of questions we've been hearing about the sales tax exemption. Um, as always, we have more information posted on our website, www.floridafarmbureau.org. And our members can always contact us here in our state legislative office in Tallahassee.